Hello, I'm Mark Nanneman. Today I'm going to talk about how to use Excel scripts to run JavaScript from Power Automate. Specifically, we're going to use a TypeScript code to return statistics on a number set from a Power Automate flow. We're even going to do a very large uh, number set with over 20,000 records. So I did some other videos um, and blog posts about how to do this with uh, PowerFX in a low-code instant plugin, and also some ways that you can get like the mode from a child flow. But this is actually a better way to do it, and it re runs much quicker and more reliably. So the first thing you need to do to do this is you need to make yourself an Excel online file and you can just save it in a SharePoint site, for example, like in a folder in your SharePoint site's shared documents. So I've made this Excel file and I call it Power Automate Scripts. And then what you do is you go to Automate, here in the ribbon, you click on Automate, and then you click New Script. And it will pop open this code editor where you can type in TypeScript, a form of JavaScript. And it will start like a sample one for you here. It's trying to take inputs from a sheet and a cell on your workbook, but you can give it custom inputs that can be used by Power Automate Flow. For example, this one right here, statistics number set, takes an input array of numbers from a Power Automate Flow and then returns some statistics like the sum, the mean, the modes, standard deviation, etc. If I click edit code, I see the TypeScript right here. Like up here at the top, you tell it the input. So you say workbook, Excel script dot workbook, input array, and then you put the input here and it's just number with braces after it to show that it's an array of numbers. And then after that, you put all your outputs here. And then beneath that is where you define like how those outputs are calculated. If you don't know JavaScript, if you're not familiar with it, and I'm not, I'm not a JavaScript expert by any means, you can use an AI assistant to help you write this. I played around with ChatGPT, Grok, DeepSeek to get this TypeScript code right here. It, it was never perfect. I never got a perfect answer from a G, uh, a GPT assistant the first go around, but you can paste it in here. You can look for any errors that show up. You can try running a sample run. If you get an error, you just feed that error back to the GPT, say, hey, I'm getting this error, and maybe give it the line that's causing the error. And after a couple times of doing that, it'll get it fixed for you. For example, I had an issue where right here at the map key part, it was wanting to call it something else besides key, but once I fed it the errors, it corrected it. Here's an example of a dialogue I had with ChatGPT to create this, this TypeScript for my Excel Online. I just told it to write a TypeScript code for an Excel Online script that can be used by Power Automate Flow to find the mode from an input array of numbers. I started just doing mode and then I added in the other statistics I wanted. And it fed me back some code. I let it know that I was having an error with the map part. It says I've replaced map parentheses number with map parentheses key, arrow parse float key, and which should resolve the issue. Let me know if you need further refinements. And it worked. And then I kept asking it to add more statistics into it, and it added some more. Um, and then I ran out of my quota for this, um, for this model of the chat GPT. So I hopped over to DeepSeek, I think, and just pasted this code in there. And it's like, hey, add me the standard deviation, uh, this and that. And it, it worked. Um, but it's actually, it's not, that stuff isn't too hard to follow. So that's how I generated my TypeScript for this. And uh, you can check the blog post in the description beneath um, to find the entire script and you can copy and paste it and use it. So once you've got your script in here and it's clean, there's no errors showing, 
you can uh, make sure you give it a name here. This is the name you're going to find it in Power Automate by. So give it a name and save it. It might auto save on you. Then you're ready to go to your flow. So here we are in the flow where we're going to use this script in our Excel file. First, we need to pull in an array of numbers to feed our statistics script. So I'm using this get items to pull in a list from this sales list in my SharePoint site. And I know this list is very long. It's got around 22,000 records or so. Here's what that list looks like in SharePoint. It's called sales and it just has this amount column with dollar amounts randomly generated. Since there's more than 5,000 records, we have to use pagination. So I go over here to settings and I turn on paginations and give it a high threshold. Underneath that, I use select to create a simple array of just numbers. So I toggle to text mode and I just put in a reference to the amount column from our get items. Then we add this run script action. You just find it by typing in run script and it will be under Excel Online Business right there. You could also use this one, I believe. So when you get run script, you, you drive it to the SharePoint site where your Excel file was saved, to the documents library, and then you just use the navigation here to find your, your Excel file. Mine was Power Automate Scripts. And now underneath script, you get this drop down, you just find that script that you added. In my case, it will give me this. By default, it'll show me, since we told it we want an array of numbers, it will have this default um, input thing where it wants me to like input my numbers one by one, which isn't practical, right? If we put like one, two, three, then toggle to the text mode to see the entire thing, it looks like that. Well, we can just replace all of this with the output of our select. And that's how we pass our very large array, our somewhat large array into our script to run. That's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and hit test and give this a run. Okay, our flow has run. The longest part was getting that paginated list of items. And our script ran in seven seconds. Let's click on this and check the outputs. It found one mode, and that mode occurred three times. The length of the whole array was 20, a little over 23,000 records. We have our min and our max. We have our mean here, standard deviation, variance, the total sum. So that's pretty cool. We'll hop over into Excel and double check all this. Here I am in Excel. I did an export of that entire list and we'll just compare the math I get out of Excel with what came from our script. So the length is the same. The mean is the same. It's just rounded a bit. The mode is the same. Our standard deviation is the same, and our sum is the same. It's just rounded up here from this. There you have it. That's how you can run JavaScript from a Power Automate Cloudflow to get statistics on a large number set. If you found the video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. You can read the blog posts in the description below, and feel free to leave a comment with um, suggestions or requests for future videos. Thanks so much for watching.